Thanks, everyone. Again, uh, my name's Danny Nirenberg. I'm president of an organization called Food Tank. Uh, we're recording for our, our new podcast called Food Talk with Danny Nirenberg. And I'm really, really excited to introduce my friend and somebody I've worked with over the years, Regina Anderson of the Food Recovery Network. Um, she has more than a decade of experience helping nonprofit organizations become better organizers, uh, better advocates, better fundraisers, and really teaching leadership skills in creative ways. Uh, she joined uh, the Food Recovery Network a few years ago, and now their network has expanded to more than 230 chapters, right? In 44 states. So it's a really massive movement of young people who are taking on the challenges of, of recovering food and making sure it gets to people uh, who need it the most. So as you know, I'm such a fan of you and, and so glad to have you here. Um, and, and while you and I have talked a lot about food waste and your work with students, I want to get into to some deeper issues that I think will be interesting to the audience around leadership in the nonprofit world and, and sort of what are the tools that you've acquired, that you want to teach to the students that you're working with, um, to organizations like mine, because I've learned a lot from you. So uh, my first question is, you call yourself an intrapreneur. And, and I, I want to know what that means and why, it, why the Food Recovery Network wanted somebody like you to help change sort of the, the, um, the, the, the company's relationship with its students and, and the people it works with. Uh, so thanks so much, Danny. Thanks for the introduction. Um, so I, Food Recovery Network was started by students. Um, they were what I would call entrepreneurs. They had a concept in their minds, um, and they thought, "Hey, we can we can do this." So they put together this understanding. They um, put together a pretty loose process on how students would recover food. And then from there, they just um, grassroots got in touch with other friends to start their own chapters. Um, and so that's how the idea was sparked. That's how it was started. And um, for the first four years um, of Food Recovery Network, that's, that's what they did. They were just getting out there, trying to get this concept in people's minds. Um, and so I come along as their first external executive director, and I say that I'm an entrepreneur because it wasn't my idea. I have ideas, but I'm not going to start a movement across the country. You know, I came in and I looked at the structure, and I immediately just tried to start to improve on what I already saw. So I, of course, you know, you create some new processes to improve things, um, but I wasn't dramatically changing what those students had already done. Um, I always call it like I'm doing the really unsexy work um, <laughs> to make the foundation of our movement stronger so that as we continue to grow, we're not going to crack and fizzle and fall apart. Well, I mean, I think what's so interesting to me about the work that you're doing is you're, you're training, you're a leader, but you're training other leaders. And so how does that work? What are, what are the skills that they're lacking? What are the skills that they're bringing to you that they already have that you might not have known about? Absolutely. So... We're thousands and thousands and thousands of students across the country who are engaged in this work. So um, you can think about, I mean, they're in every single major. Um, they enter into every single sector once they graduate. So a lot of the students, um, they are already very active on their college campuses. So they are involved in like, you know, four or five different clubs. And then they start an FRN chapter or they start volunteering with us. So they're already really strong leaders. Um, or... Um, what happens a lot is people come because they feel really passionate about not wasting food. Um, they're really shy or they've never done any kind of organizing before. And we give them tools. We do a lot of coaching, mentoring. We help people have difficult conversations with dining or with, with adults, I say. Um, you know, they hear no a lot. And so how do you overcome that? So we really help to uh, enhance things that they already bring to the table, like their just willingness to participate um, but then we infuse into that things like, here's how to run a meeting effectively, um, here's how to do some fundraising, this is what it really looks like, we're going to get into the weeds on this. Um, here's how to, you know, collaborate and talk with other people. Um, it's all about relationships, that's, that's all that we do. It's about relationships and enhancing that um, through some practical tools. I mean, what, again, what's interesting to me is you're teaching really interesting 
business skills that these kids, no matter what major they have, yeah. will help them throughout their lives. So I, I guess my question is, how does the work that you're doing, you know, it's on food, right? But it's gonna reverberate in other sectors as well. And are you learning from, you know, graduates where, where they've gone and, and what they're doing? Absolutely, so we uh, just started our um, alumni network. Um, so that was one of the things that, you know, I brought into FRN when I, when I first started um, because I've worked at a lot of other nonprofit organizations that um, developed leaders and then they kind of went out into the world and were doing all these amazing things but then we kind of like lost track of them over time so I immediately was like we need to keep hold of all these folks because um, just because you graduate it doesn't mean you stop caring, you stop being an activist. Um, so a lot of our students, um, you know, they are sustainability majors, they're, you know, food majors, but we also have people who study art and study history, architect, architecture. Um, we have a bunch of finance people, you know, so those folks, once they graduate, um, they may or may not go into the food space. Oftentimes they, they don't. Um, and so they bring still the, the idea that what we want to do is to help thicken the fabric of our communities. And that can mean a lot of different things for different people and how they participate and engage in that activity. So we see people um, doing all kinds of really wonderful things after they graduate. So I, I recently watched a video of you where you were being sort of interviewed by, by a student. Do you want to describe that conversation, why that, that particular young person was so special to you? I love him. Yes, it's this uh, young man, his name is Matt Scott, and he has a video cast, which I didn't even know what that was, but called 180 Degrees of Impact. And it's his side project, it's his passion project. It's not his day job. And what he does is he just interviews people that he finds to be inspiring um, and that are doing some really neat things. He's a very curious individual, and so he just asks like lots of questions and lets people be who they wanna be. Um, and so I've since introduced him to a lot of my friends because um, he is just such a really good listener. He makes you feel like a million, a million dollars. And he's now gone on to interview so many amazing people doing all kinds of really wonderful things that I wouldn't have known who they are. So he's just one of those creators, one of those makers in the world doing very really positive, gentle things. It's That's great. That's great. That's awesome. So all of the chapters that you work with are doing things in different ways, mm -hmm. right? Yep. And so a couple of questions come to mind. One, what are you learning from them mm -hmm. for the sort of the bigger organization, yep. the umbrella? Yes. And, and then how do you support those different efforts in those different chapters? So I, one of the wonderful things about being part of a movement um, is, you know, I always say, like, I just represent the students. You know, I'm, I'm here humbly, um, you know, hopefully um, representing them at, well. And uh, so when you're part of a movement, I think the first thing that I learned is you really have to just let go. Um, you know, we have certain structures in place. You know, you have to be able to handle the food safely. That's, that's non-negotiable. Um, when you transport it, you know, you have to be able to make sure that the people who are receiving that food can also handle it safely. So we have a few things that are just non-negotiables. But after that, you know, the students are free to do whatever they want. And it does manifest itself in lots of different ways. I mean, we have people who um, will bike over the food from their school to the homeless shelter. Um, we have people making all kinds of really cool t-shirts. And, you know, they're not only activists, but they're educators as well. So some of the things that we're learning are um, a huge thing that, that, that ha has started to come up is the fact that our students really care about the health and well-being of each other. So student food insecurity is something that our students are reaching out to us all the time to say, hey, how can we start a food pantry on our college campus? Um, there's something like this really staggering stat. Don't quote me on it because it's probably a little off, but like in 2003, there was something like four co uh, college pantries um, registered, um, and now there's something like over 600. And, and those are the only ones that we just that we know of. Yeah. You know? So it is a huge, huge, huge problem. Yeah, I mean, we make these jokes about starving college students, but it, it's literally, literally true. Yes. And, and these are people who are trying to you know, improve themselves and, mm -hmm. and, and gain more education. So mm -hmm. what are some of the ways that, that the Food Recovery Network, so you're starting pantries, mm -hmm. and you're helping recover food. Yes. And then 
teaching, you know, how to use leftover, what other kinds of things yeah. are, are happening? Yeah, so for, for us, we are all about preventing food waste from happening at the very beginning. So if there's like 15 trays of macaroni and cheese, we're gonna recover those 15 trays. You know, there are other organizations that we collaborate with that will take those 15 trays and then they'll also bring over some greens and like they'll make that into a meal. Um, we don't necessarily do that part. Um, so we're like, what, what you get is what you get. And a lot of times, uh, the shelters, soup kitchens, they will then add that and make a full meal from mm -hmm. it. Um, but some of the things that we're starting to see, especially around the student food pantries, are there's a couple of cafes that um, students have started where every Wednesday, it doesn't matter who you are, you can just come on in and grab some food and hang out. Um, what I really feel from our students across the country is this deep, deep commitment to dignity. Dignity and respect, um, because you don't have enough money for food, that doesn't matter. Just come as you are, um, have a good time with us, all of us, um, and then, you know, go on your merry way. Yeah, I mean, I think that dignity part of this conversation is not brought up enough. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, Food Tank just had our summit on, on food loss and food waste. We didn't bring it up enough. And I, I think it's something that we should all be thinking about. It's not, not enough to just, you know, reclaim food and give it out. It's how do you provide that dignity? And I think because you're working with young people who are coming up with creative ideas, they're going to figure this out better than like what food banks have been doing over the last 30 years. Oh, absolutely. And you know, our students post a lot of videos. They do the Instagram stories that I'm just learning about. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and a lot of times when our students bring the food to their partner agency, they often will stay there and help serve the food. They um, are engaged in a lot of cleanup projects where they'll help paint um, the walls or clean up bathrooms. Um, it, doesn't, it doesn't really matter. You know, they want to participate. And I think that's truly, um, the, that's what binds us all together. You know, it's just this understanding that food happens to be the vehicle um, that's bringing us together, but it's that desire to participate and be among people that, you know, allows us to care. Absolutely. So w one of the things that I've, I've been wanting to ask you about is, you know, there's all this momentum and interest and attention in food loss and food waste that we didn't have five or 10 years ago. But we all know that there's been a long history of, of wasting food, you know, and, and having it addressed by the United Nations in 1974 at the First World Food Conference in Rome, um, you know, in the 1930s, in the 1940s, around victory gardens and, and, and food rations because of, of wartime. But w one of the things that I get nervous about is losing that momentum and losing that interest. But when I see organizations like the Food Recovery Network or some of the others who are in this room, I don't feel like we're going to lose that momentum. Is it something that concerns you, though? Not yet. <laughs> Not yet. I was talking to uh, a couple of friends who are also in the food space, and they're like, oh, my God, plastic straws are like the new puppy in town, and everyone's just like trying to talk about plastic straws. But, um, you know, the thing about recovery is that, you know, I always say this to, to people, that I've yet to meet a person who says, I love wasting food. It's like the best thing ever. I feel so satisfied when I do that. Um, and so the work that we're doing is it's all about education. And it is all about behavior. Every single person eats food. Mm -hmm. And every single person understands like, you know, usually we feel a little bit of guilt around like, you know, not finishing what's on our plate or, or whatnot. And it's about the process. It's not about perfection. You know, it is about, all right, I pretty much know that I'm not going to eat all the food when I go out to a restaurant. So maybe I'll start you know, being better about eating my leftovers, mm -hmm, you know. Mm -hmm. And so there's a lot to be done, and I think we all as individuals see that I, as one person, I can always strive to do a little bit better. Absolutely, and you brought up an important point. No one wants to waste food, right? And I think the other thing that's cool is that this is a bipartisan issue, or should Absolutely. be yeah. in, in so many ways, because no, I mean, it hits our, the economy. Yes. It hits your personal sort of economic yes. <laughs> situation and it hits the national economy. Do you feel like the students you're working with are making those connections between the political part of this, especially with the elections on Tuesday? Absolutely. You know, when we had our um, national conference um, last year, I surveyed the room and um, literally, literally about a third of the people said they wanted to be farmers. Another third said that they wanted to, um, you know, go into business. And then the other third said they wanted to do policy of some sort. Um, and so our students all across the country are really following their, um, you know, state 
uh, regulations, you know, there's a lot of new laws coming through. And not only, you know, with, with food waste, but it's also just people are thinking no organics should be thrown away. That should not be in our landfill. We work with a really great um, nonprofit called Post... Um, I always get this wrong. But it's called PLAN. So they're Post Landfill Action Network. Mm. And they say, no more landfills. What a great, audacious idea. Like, revolutionary. why do we have... It's revolutionary. And that's what they're working on. And so we say, awesome, you guys. Let's collaborate. Let's us get, make sure that no food is going to landfills. You guys can figure out the straws and, and the refrigerators and everything else. But <laughs> Yeah, no, that's great. I mean, I think, you know, you and I, obviously... Um, we're, we're sitting on the stage, we come from privileged backgrounds, and I feel like leadership is often associated with really, you know, higher forms of education and, and having the access and ability. Yes. Are there plans for the Food Recovery Network to reach out to more community colleges and underserved students? You know, I know you're already yes. doing that with, you know, folks with the food banks yep. on campuses, but how do we reach that community who might not feel like they can be leaders? I love that. So when I, when I worked at CORO, which was a leadership development organization, we partnered with Public Allies, um, which is an AmeriCorps signature program. And their tagline is, new leaders for new times. And they really targeted people who um, had their GED um, or had their high school diploma. Um, and they said, you can be a leader. Um, it's just a mindset. Um, and so for us, we are always trying to get any college or university that wants to be um, part of our network and work with us, um, we welcome them. Um, and so it's a different kind of, I guess, challenge, I would say, with a two-year institution because, you know, funny thing about college students is after a couple of years they graduate and, you know, we have to bring on um, new people to take over. Um, and so that rate is a little bit faster with community colleges, but um, among college students, it is people who are in com community colleges, two-year institutions, that often face um, food insecurity at higher rates than at four-year institutions. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. a problem for, you know, that age group, however, um, among community colleges. So we really are working to get more um, community colleges um, into our network. And in fact, um, where we had our conference, uh, it's a two-year institution, you can get four-year degrees as well. But the women who worked there, um, all of them worked full time. They were mothers. Most of them were single mothers. And they helped to establish their student pantry. And they talked to all of our students there about how they did it. Um, and it was one of the most inspiring things that I've, I've ever seen. That's really cool. Um, we talked about dignity before. And so I remember being kind of a uh, and, you know, I don't know a better word, an asshole college student, like I knew everything. How do you, you know, I, I think because a lot of the work that, that you're, the students you're do, working with are doing is, is going into food service and, and talking to, you know, the, the ladies who work in the cafeteria. What, what is the response from um, the university and college staff towards what young folks are trying to do? That's another really wonderful part of this movement is, it, again, it gets people talking to other people. And oftentimes, um, people who are overlooked, I would say. Um, so our students are building relationships with the people who are actually cooking their food. Um, and when our students talk to them, it, it's really wonderful what happens. You know, um, I think I've given this, this concept before. With people who are making food, um, you know, doing really hard work to make all this amazing food for these college students. If at the end of, you know, an eight hour shift, you've spent the whole day making all this food and then your boss asks you to throw that food away, there's no dignity there. Mm -mm. And so when our students come into this and they say, actually, thank you for all of this food, whatever's left over, um, we now can ensure that more people are going to eat what you just made for all of us. Um, and so we get a lot of pictures of students with their dining providers and the staff um, taking pictures because they know one another, um, they're really happy to be able to package up that food and make sure that it goes to where it needs to go to help people. So it's really nice. Everyone wants to feel like they're doing a good job, exactly. so that's great. That's exactly so you have been mentoring people for a long time and, and, you know, building these leadership skills. What is your advice for young people who are listening, who are here today, about how to get involved in their university or in their workplace or, or you know, in their own community? Yeah, I, I 
love seeing young people get involved. And when I lived in Pittsburgh, I volunteered for everything. Um, and so I would say, if you're interested, um, just just go for it. Just try something. You know, hook up with a friend and do what they're doing. And you might not like it. You might want to try something else, and that's totally fine. The wonderful thing about volunteering is, you know, you it's not your job. I, when I volunteered, I screwed up all the time. I screwed up so much. But that's how I learned how to fundraise. That's how I learned how to recruit. That's how I learned how to do most of the things that I have to apply to my job every day at FRN. Um, I apologize to all those organizations that help, let me help them. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, you just gotta, just gotta try it. No, I mean, I think that's such good advice, and we don't hear that enough from the nonprofit community. I've tried to be very transparent. Like, Food Tank has made nothing but mistakes over the last five years, and we've yeah. learned from them, but it's an experimentation, and I think Absolutely. a lot of groups don't have that opportunity, but you, you do because mm -hmm. you're growing, yes. and you have this ability to pivot when you right. need to. Absolutely. That's a, you know, another really great thing about FRN is um, you know, we, we try a lot of stuff. We actually, there was a nonprofit that we wanted to, um, we weren't like really sure what we could do together. Um, so we had like a bunch of different meetings and we put together a proposal. You know, I was just talking to Danny before we came on and you know, about my personality, I'm a, I'm a decision maker, right? I've got enough information, let's go. Um, and so I was like, okay, let's, let's put together this proposal. Here's like four or five different things I think that we could do together. Um, I was working with one of um, our fellows who's with us for a one year rotation. Um, and that, at the end of the day, that nonprofit, they're like, well, you know, we can't really, uh. and I was like, okay, well, I'll see you guys at the next event or whatever. You're like, no, no harm, no foul. At least we tried. Right. It totally didn't work though. You know? Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. So because this is Food Loves Tech, mm -hmm. I, I do want to ask you a few questions about technology and how the Food Recovery Network is embracing. Yeah. So you're embracing more social media yes. because the young people you're working with are teaching you all how, mm -hmm. which is great, and yeah. they're telling those stories in creative ways. Yes. What are some other ways? I know you have big plans in the future and, and, and uh, the, the Food Recovery Network is growing. Yeah. How are you embracing different forms of technology to amplify the work? So. I think there's you know two different things. It's like how am I as a person embracing technology? Where's my typewriter? I just <laughs> I can barely use my phone. Um, but FRN as a movement, you know, technology is really important for us, and we just spent um, about almost one year putting together a new what we call a student portal. And this is where students come on and they can post pictures and they can give us their information. We're very data heavy organization you know we're only as good our impact you know we can only tell that story when we when we um, can show what we're able to do with with our numbers so uh, it was a huge endeavor um, my program manager HC who is fabulous um, led the charge on that um, and that was really intentional on my part because uh -huh. I wanted to grow her as a leader um, I really wanted her to figure out the different ways that this portal could like look and feel for people coming in. We always say we don't want to be a barrier um, to our students to talk with one another, share resources, um, and so this portal is going to allow us to do that. So it just launched this fall. Oh, immediately it was buggy. It's super buggy. Um, and some people on my staff are just like, oh, I hate, oh, there's another bug. And I was like, you know, it's, it's okay. And our students are going to tell us when they see things that they're like, I think I'm supposed to be able to click this button and nothing's happening. It's probably not right. Um, and it's okay. It's, it's going to be okay. We're going to, what we, what we call, we're going to make that, those peanuts into smooth, creamy peanut butter. And then we'll move on to the next thing. Yeah, that's great. I mean, I think what I find interesting, again, is that you're, you're collecting data that's never been collected yeah. before. And it's not only useful to your organization, it's useful to universities, mm -hmm. it's useful for setting an example. Yeah. Can, can you talk a little bit about that and why this data is so important, especially around this issue where there's so little data still around Absolutely. how much we're actually losing and wasting? Absolutely. So this is another thing of, you know, about the culture of FRN is um, we want to share. We want to um, help others in this space because no one organization, no one person is going to move the needle on really reducing how much food we waste in this country. So we share our data broadly with anybody who wants it. Um, so there are organizations like um, Refed, um, so they've put out a bunch of reports that show, you know, different statistics around how we can um, prevent food from being wasted, and if there are surplus, different interventions on how to, um, you know, make sure that that food isn't going into landfills. 
So we use that information to then um, put together resources for our students. And then in turn, we can give the data that we're collecting, so pounds of food, how many you know, different volunteers, how long it takes to do this kind of work, um, and then we can make declarative statements. And we hope that that information is also useful for other nonprofits who are trying to figure out um, how they can organize the work that they're doing to be most effective. That's great. So I think we're running out of time. I want to give um, maybe one question from the audience. Does anyone? Great. This is great. No, whichever. Yeah. Whoever. That would be great. I was just curious how you define success because I read about um, people making beer from bread or Disney's now powering their parks with wasted food. So can you talk about um, you know, how you measure it and just even how you're making sort of relationships with some of these other players? Absolutely. That is such a, do we have another <laughs> four days to talk about success? Um, so I, we are in year three of a three-year strategic plan at FRN. Um, and so that's part of the whole, you know, you have to build it and then implement it and then you build it again and then implement um, and so I'm now just beginning to work on our next three-year strategic plan. And so we saw within that we wanted to grow to a certain number of chapters. So we're hoping to be at 290 um, by the summer. Um, we had goals around one thing that's really exciting about our students is like every year they get better and better and better at recovering food. Even though we are bringing on new chapters, each chapter in and of itself um, recovers more food, which shows there's so much food out there to yeah. be recovered. Um, and so we're hopeful that our students are going to get to a point where we can recover one million pounds of food um, every single program year. Right now we're at about 866,000 pounds we can recover in one year. Um, so once we get to that point, um, you know, things like that are success. But for me, it's also long-lasting relationships where we can keep on collaborating, building new programs. Um, you know, Danny and I have a couple of ideas of ways that we want to work together in a different way. So that's also success. Relationships aren't just a static thing. They grow, they're dynamic, they fluctuate. Um, and for me, like, I can see um, in my mind what it means when, when you're really you know, going down a path really well with another organization. So, so that's also success as, as well. Um, but I have a lot more, you know, ideas for that. What, one more? Hi, I'm Faith, and uh, I noticed you went to the University of Maine. So I w went to Orono back in the 90s. Oh, uh, awesome. We started that program taking from the kitchens and the commons and delivering to all the Orno and Bangor awesome. area. So I'm so glad Yay. years later to see this work <laughs> progressing. Um, it, what you're doing is a lot of best practices and a lot of the data gathering is really good. How can we start like a mentorship program with companies that have large um, oh, yeah. food uh, cafes in their for their employees? Yep. Yep. So I'm thinking some way of um, coming and having that mentorship. So yep the companies can come and see what you're doing and understand your data and analytics and all your best practices. And then they can do the same thing with the employee food waste that we have here in the city. I love that so much. And we actually do engage in that kind of work, Faith. So we have a program called Food Recovery Verified, which is outside of higher education, how we help corporations. Um, we actually recover from events. We help caterers. Um, and so the best part is, you know, we can go to them. Um, and so we have a, a few really great examples of, we actually have a couple of um, businesses here um, where every company is different, so their needs are very different. Um, and so we just talk with them. Let's get in the weeds, we'll roll out. At any issue that you think that you have, we're gonna problem solve that. And that's what we were able to do for some of these companies where one of them was, we can't bring the food anywhere at, at the end of the day. We can package it up, but we don't have time. So we found a partner agency that has a truck and can come to them. Um, and now, not only are they recovering their food, but they actually enlisted a few other companies in the area. So there's like this little trifecta. So now this, this truck um, can come and collect from three different places, and it's, it's wonderful. So we definitely help um, educate, uh, you know, outside the private sector um, in doing that. So, yeah. We're out of time, unfortunately. Thank you so much, Thank Regina, you. and thanks to all of you. Yeah, thanks, everyone.